When it comes to ARC, building a PvP base may seem confusing, so we proudly present our 1 hour, 10 hour, and 100 hour full base designs on the island. Coming at number 3, this one can be found at 33.8 latitude and 78.8 longitude. However, this one can be built just about anywhere. So this is our 5x5. It is a nice little simple design and it has about 50 turrets on it. It's honestly not a horrible base to build and it actually works on official pretty well too. So as you can see, we have the entire base that's surrounded by X seeds on the bottom along with 4 X seeds on top. Along with that we have some double doors that are being used to hold up our turrets. So we also have turrets that are upside down just to kind of help out with the defenses that are lower down. On the roof of the base we have an Indy Forge and an Indy Grinder. Underneath the Indy Forge there is a nice little hole where you can easily access the Indy Forge and you can easily just pull your metal out and put it in a vault. So as you can see in the front there is a nice little ladder for getting up on the roof. Makes it super simple and there is enough room to go ahead and land a Quetzal on top of the roof and easily just keep farming, go, go back up, you know, keep farming, all that good stuff. So anyways, coming inside, as you can see over here, we have four smithies, two chem benches, and four fabricators right there. We also have a grill, and then an indie cooker, and a refrigerator next to it. We have a couple vaults down here, and then some more refrigerators in the corner. It's a nice, open, kind of more open plan, which is super nice if you have a bigger tribe. So you have a lot more room to actually move in here. Now you can add more fabricators if, if you really want to. I feel like four is pretty decent for a, sm a smaller tribe that's about six players, though. Coming up here to our second layer, this is our vault storage room. I was able to fit about 25 vaults in here. Oh, and then there's your little indie forge hole right there as well. There's a bed back there in the corner and then your generator is upstairs. There's about 25 vaults in here, which is actually quite a bit. I was surprised I was actually able to fit that many in here. But you have tons of vault storage and overall it does make for a really, really good base. It's super simple, does not take long at all to build and works for most tribes. And coming at number two, this one can be found at 41.6 latitude and 67.6 longitude. And this is the Pillar Plateau. The Pillar Plateau has been very popular over the years of Ark Survival Evolved and is pretty popular now on Ark Survival Ascended. Now whenever crop pods come out, this spot's probably going to suck, I'm just going to say that now. However, this, this one base can be built anywhere as well. So this, we're stepping it up a little bit bigger. So this is our 7x7, seven seven. it is one step up and it actually makes a huge difference. This has exactly 100 turrets, you have 4 X seeds on the roof just to kind of stop any people from like stego dropping or like turtle dropping on top of your base. A decent amount of heavies up here too and you have a couple tech turrets it's gonna stop a lot of players from also flying by your base which is super nice then you have a second arc net these things are called arc nets we can't really build them with hatch frames anymore because there's no hatch frames in arc so it's the closest thing that i could do to make it an arc net arc net basically just stops dinos from falling onto your base down here we have four indie forges which was actually quite a lot and then you have two indie grinders now if you're on official you're not gonna be able to fit all four on here but if you're on unofficial servers where clipping is enabled the four indie forges will work which i was very surprised that you can easily fit that in here now you're gonna notice we have four more xc's on the roof and then we have these little portholes the portholes are meant for pt storage and mainly just flyer storage so you have a little bit of room to store some flyers in the base and that's how you can get in now whenever the cryopods come out Again, it does, it's not going to matter. That's just for now until the cryopods are out. Now down here, we decided to go ahead and do a nice little vault layer on the walls. Since vaults are super overpowered, this is actually very, very helpful. The only downside is vaults are very expensive, so it is going to suck having to build this. So that is optional. It's really up to you. Just know, vaults are super, super OP right now. So um, I highly recommend putting vaults on your first layer because it's really going to keep a lot, a lot of people out from trying to get in in the corners. And they're going to have to go in through your main door. Now coming inside, I was able to fit a replicator in here, surprisingly, and it does work. Just put down the, the replicator first, then build your ceilings over it. That is the only way to, to actually get it to fit in here. Now over here, we have six fabric, actually seven fabricators, my fault. You have seven fabricators, eight chem benches, and a ton of, of uh, deadly storages that are surrounding the replicator. Now, yes, the replicator does still work, even though there's stuff clipping through it, which is very surprising as well. You have a tech teleporter on the bottom, and then you have an indie grill and a indie uh, cooker over there in the corner. You have a bed over here, some vault storage, and then some refrigerator storage. Overall, it's not a bad layout for your first layer. Now coming up to the second layer, there's this entrance going up to the second layer, along with one over in the other corner. Now this is really your main PT storage area and your egg hatchery. 
Now you're probably wondering, it's a little bit, it's gonna be a little bit weird to, to hatch some dinos in here, which is why we kind of had a little porthole in the ground, so you can easily get your babies out and then bring them out front. It's a nice little way of hiding some dinos in here for now, so that people don't snipe your uh, babies. So up top, we do have a nice vault storage. There's a lot of vaults up here, so you have a ton of storage up here. Along with that, you do have those portholes for storing some more dinos in here. So it's really up to you. If you want to put some PTs in here, you can, but it's going to be a little bit tight. Again, until the cryopods come out, you're going to have to use that method for now. But overall, it is a pretty good base. It's very, very powerful and it'll work on any server. And finally, coming at number one, this one can be found at 29.5 latitude and 32.0 longitude. And this is our ice cave build. So this one, you unfortunately cannot build this one anywhere else. I mean, you can if you can find the right size cave and where everything almost fits. But to, to start this thing off, we built a massive turret tower on the front. That's really going to stop a lot of players from, from getting in. Along with that, you have a nice little pillar wall right here to stop any downloads from pushing up onto your main turret wall. Now, there's a certain way that you have to build this for the 100 turret limit to work properly. You want to build your tower first to build this wall first and then build things slowly as you go back. If you skip a, a section, you're not going to be able to put any turrets down of the turret range issue now over here we have a nice little hidden entrance right here but this does open it up into the main area now back here it is a little bit bland i do put have the tech generator a little bit farther back so that it actually powers a lot more in here so you can put turrets throughout here i didn't because of the turret limit it's gonna it's a little bit tricky to fit some stuff in here but this main section is just ground turrets you're honestly the ground turrets is your best option here they're super overpowered especially the tech turrets and it just annoys a lot of players. Having this many ground turrets, they're gonna get pissed off with it. So highly recommend putting a ton of them down. I have a nice little tech generator hidden right back here as well. It's a nice spot for it. You can hide it farther back if you really want to. I just put it there because I don't know. Kind of fit there pretty well. Then again, we also have some bear traps back here. Another little wall to stop some dinos from getting through, along with three turrets right there. Now here is our big turret wall. The big turret wall consists of 100 turrets on it. It is absolutely massive and it's absolutely terrifying. You have a lot of area in here, meaning the second that somebody enters into the spot, they're dead. I mean, you, they're almost not getting through and having the wall pushed back so far, they can't rocket it, they can't rocket run it. And I would highly recommend building a lot of small bear traps to keep a lot of players from running. Now, over here, we have a nice little teleporter. You can do whatever you want with this space. I'm just gonna use it for extra dino storage, but there's your main teleporter right there. That's gonna teleport you from the back of the base to the front of the base, because I will tell you, it is a far, far journey to the back of this cave. You have another tech generator right there. Along with that, here is our main dino storage area, which can be found right down here. Now you can do whatever you want with this location, but until the crowd pods are out, you will need a lot of dino storage. So this location is perfect for that. You can fit tons of gigas, tons of rexes. I mean, you, you can fit anything in here to be honest with you, but you have a lot of room down here. I also put some feeding troughs and it circles around over here. So overall, it is a really, really good cave for dino storage, not to mention, down here, you can also use this as your main base, or you can use it as some dino storage. I put the main base back in, back down in here because it fits better and overall just works a lot better. So over here, you have about seven indie forges, which is a absolute ton. Tons of chem benches, fabricators, smithies. You also have your smithies on the indie forges, which is super, super nice. You have some daddy storages in between each one as well. It overall is a nice layout. It's easy to craft, easy to, to get some things. But over here, you have a nice little vault storage over here along with your replicators. Your replicators are going to be found over here in the corner. Now, again, you can put those wherever you want. I just decided to go ahead and put them in the corner. You have some vaults right here, then some extra daddy storages next to the replicators. Now, you have a lot of a, a lot of turrets on the grounds because honestly, it does make it a little bit harder for people to actually get over here with that many turrets on the ground. So, the, uh, like I said earlier, you got some fabricators right here, some cam benches, and then this is your main crafting area for your cooker, your grill, and then some indie grinders. Now behind that are some refrigerators and then your personal storage. Now by personal storage, I mean, this is built for six people. So you have a six person personal storage, which is just a vault and a refrigerator. Now you can add more stuff to that based off of your player's needs, of course. But overall, it's a very good use of this space. Then you have a little bit of dino storage back here and a nice little raising area as well that you can possibly use for raising, but we built another one in the back. You have a tech teleporter right here then you have a transmitter and then a force field. The force field is going to basically cover this entire area. So if somebody does get back here, you just pop that thing on and your main base is mostly protected. So anyways, coming back in here, this is a bit of a far, far journey, but I just recommend using this area for dino storage. That's honestly the, the best bet. I don't really know what else that you could really use this for. 
unless you want to figure out how to push your main base back in here but it is going to be one tricky main base to fit in here and it's just kind of tight and a mess i'll just say that so back here you have a lot of turrets including a nice little turret wall if you want to call it that then you can build a bigger turret wall it's really up to your standards i just built one with pillars because it's super annoying they're all basically one piece so if you take down one pillar it's not going to fall that's why i like to build those lots of dinosaurs down in here and then you have your hatchery back in here as well you have a teleporter right here so you can easily teleport some dinos up to the main front if you really need to but this is the cave for dino storage. I'll just say that right now. This is absolutely the best cave for dino storage. Along with that, you have a full incubator area and some nice ramps that are leading down. But anyways, that's it for this full base design. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Don't forget to leave a like if you're new and hit that subscribe button. And thanks for watching.